Hey everyone, and welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So, today I thought we'd take a look at how to swap the faceplate on an original Nintendo Switch dock. Now, if you've been following my channel at all, uh, basically, last video, what we did is we actually swapped the shell on my Nintendo Switch Pro Controller to give it this awesome retro NES style. So what I thought we'd do today is we'd actually use the matching kit from Extreme Rate to actually m switch the dock to match the retro NES style. Now just first, I'd like you guys to know that I'm going for a retro NES style, but this is far from the only style you can go for. You can either do just swaps of shells of different colors, or there's a bunch of different styles to choose from. And what's awesome is basically the shell swap and the faceplate swaps, all the procedures are exactly the same no matter what style you're going for. So if you want to follow along in this video, it'll be a perfect guide to how to actually do these things. And for those who missed my video about the uh, shell swap on the controller, well, I'll leave a link up below and in the description of the video. So if you want to follow along, uh, feel free to check that video out. Or if you were actually coming more for the controller, you can switch that video right away. So basically, by the end of the video, we'll have a matching set that'll look something like this. And once again, what's really great about this mod is that the difficulty level is actually really not too high. I would say it's maybe a slight pinch above the uh, swap we did on the controller shell the other day. But once again, even if you've never modded anything before in your life, this is another one of those perfect projects to get you started. And also, once again, this is a kit that was provided to me free of charge by Extreme Rate. Now, this is not a paid video. They are not paying me in any way to do this review. So all the remarks and the evaluation of the products will be my own opinion. However, they did provide me the products free of charge. And I just want to let you guys know that before we get started, just so that everything is on the up and up. And lastly, if you appreciate this video, please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you aren't already. It really helps my channel grow a lot and those likes really do help the videos get more visibility. So without further ado, let's get started on how to swap the faceplate of your Nintendo Switch dock. So once again, just before we get started, let's take a look at what's offered in this kit. So when you open this kit up, this is what you have. You basically have the faceplate. You also have a pair of screwdrivers and they include both a tri-wing screwdriver and a regular Phillips head. So they provide all the screwdrivers you'll need to take apart your switch dock. And they also include a series of replacement screws. Now what's important is that when I did the actual controller shell swap, I used all the screws from the replacement pack because I wanted to make sure that they fit perfectly the grooves of the replacement shell itself. However, in the case of the Nintendo switch dock, I'll be using all the original screws I'll also be once again using my personal screwdriver, but I just wanna really remind you that these screwdrivers really do the job perfectly. It's just I already have a, a personal screwdriver with a tri-wing bit and I'm used to using it, so I'm gonna be using that one instead. So now let's switch to the Nintendo Switch dock because as before, the first part is getting the dock apart. So let's get started with that first. So here we have the Switch dock. So the first thing we're gonna do, wanna do is actually remove the back door. So basically you just put it in the open position, you apply a bit of force, and you basically just pull the door off. So the first step is we're gonna have to tackle eight tri-wing screws. So if you're using the included screwdriver, you'll want the one with the finer tip, basically. Now as we're going, don't forget to set your screws aside and keep them grouped together. So the small ones were the one that went into the back of the faceplate. The uh, longer screws were the ones that came out of the USB ports. Now the next step is to just remove the back plate on your Nintendo Switch. So the next step is basically getting the USB uh, port section free. So the first step is you're going to want to release the flap on the ribbon cable right here. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab under the section here towards the outside and pull up. Now you're going to have a couple little tabs here holding it in. You're just going to want to put a little bit pressure on the tabs to have it release. 
Now don't pull too hard because you also have this little switch here that you're going to have to remove on the other side. So once you have that removed, you're just going to pull straight up and remove that little pin. So now we have the USB section free, we can set it aside. Next, we're gonna to switch to our Phillips head screwdriver and we have three screws to tackle to free the backside. So after we release those three obvious screws, we have six hidden screws to hit. Basically, if you look at all the holes here, there's one, two, three, one under the ribbon cable, five and six here in the corner. If you look at the other edge, basically you have six screws that you can remove. Now I'm actually gonna have to swap to the included screwdriver because you need a really long, thin, edged screwdriver to be able to reach those screws. Now with those six screws out, you're going to see that if you lift up on your dock, it'll come right apart. Now the next step is really easy. You need to just remove here basically the socket. Basically, you're just going to grab the edges and you're going to sort of twist in a, in a turning motion and you'll see it'll come right out. And finally, the last and final step is just to press downwards and you're going to release basically the front, the back portion of the front of the dock. And also we can't forget, we need to basically release here the little LED that basically controls the dock light here on the side. And then to free the little plastic section here of the light, you just use your tweezers from the front and you press down, it'll come right out. So obviously I'm gonna keep my old faceplate because you never know what could happen. You might need a replacement one one day so just set this aside and keep it safe. So now if we take our replacement faceplate comes the fun part, reassembly. So basically we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna work in reverse. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to put back in is that little light. If you can see there's sort of like a little fin type shaped, you will wanna make sure that that fin is basically facing forward when you're putting it in. Next, we're gonna reinstall the little LED that basically controls the brightness of the power switch here on the dock. Once again, if you look, there's like an L shape. You wanna basically make sure that the L shape is facing forward, basically. Next, we're gonna add in the protective inside panel. So you place it down in the switch dock and you push it as far high up as it can go. Next, we're gonna put back in the docking mechanism. Basically, you're going to use a reverse rotating motion that you used. So basically, you're gonna install the dock and install it by rotating it upwards. You might have to put quite a bit of pressure since this is the first time you're installing it in this new dock. But once you have it in position, and you do use that rotating motion, it should go in no problem, just like that. So next is a little bit more of the tricky part. It's that basically you need to put the back of the dock back on, but you need to pass the ribbon cable through this opening right here. And you need to pass this little white plug through this opening right here. So basically you're just going to have to squeeze them through as you basically get the dock back in place. Now basically we have to screw back in the six hidden screws to begin with. Then we continue on with our three regular screws right here. And now comes the last tricky part. 
basically reinstalling the USB hub. So first, don't forget to connect that little white connector because it'll be impossible to connect once you have it in place. Then what I like to do is I like to right away install it fully into the shell. And the last step is to reinstall that ribbon cable. Now for the ribbon cable, it's going to take a little bit of wiggling to get it into the proper position to be able to close the clasp. Once you've got it in position, you're just going to close the clasp. So once you have the clasp closed, we just have to reinstall the back plate. So don't forget, we're going to have to switch back to our tri-wing screwdriver. I start with the longer screws. Remember, the longer ones go into the USB dock. And obviously, as a very final step, let's not forget to snap our back door back in place in the open position. And there we have it. We are now done reassembling our switch dock. So there we have it. We have our perfectly swapped faceplate for our Nintendo Switch dock. And honestly, once again, what I really love about these extreme rate products is that the plastic does not feel cheap. It has that same rubbery feel as we had on the Pro Controller. And I've got to say that when you put them side by side, it really does give that nostalgic NES feeling to it. So here we are once again, 15 minutes of your time, and we have an awesome modded Nintendo Switch dock. And what I really love about these faceplate swaps is that generally they only cost about $15. And if you want to buy a special edition of a Nintendo Switch to have a more original dock, uh, unless they're in stock at normal price, you're going to have to pay really through the nose to get a specialized version of a Nintendo Switch dock. And even at that, there aren't that many themed Nintendo Switches. You can get a whole boatload of faceplate replacements. And what I particularly like about the extreme rate, once again, I just want to really mention that their products are really high quality. Now, I know that they gave me these, their products for free, but trust me, I wouldn't be telling you guys to buy a product that I didn't believe in. They basically gave me free review samples. If I didn't like their products, I would be telling you right now that I did not like their products. However, it's the contrary. I was really surprised by the quality of the plastics they use and just how well these replacement kits go together. Like, trust me, I've done plenty of mods, whether it be Game Boy macros, replacement shells for old Game Boys, for Nintendo 64s. I've honestly done almost all of those mods myself and when you buy those cases on AliExpress and you really get that cheap plastic and or those pearly designed basically shells that you almost have to, you know, modify yourself to have them fit properly the original parts. It really feels good to get your hands on a product that delivers exactly what it's supposed to do. Be a replacement shell for an original product and to fit on just like the original while giving you some extra flair. So as I did in the other video, I left the links down below to the Extreme Rate products because since I really like their products, I have no problem showing you the links that they gave me if you want to pick them up for yourself. However, they aren't sponsored links in any way, so they really give no kickbacks or anything to the channel. So just feel free to use them or buy the products wherever you feel you want to. And once again, just before we go, I just want to remind you to please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you aren't already and you want to see more of my content. But anyways, if you're at this point, thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.